In this section, we'll focus on the identity service that will help us to create a new user account and also log into the system. In this section, we are going to take a look at defining our user entity, hashing passwords in a secure way, storing the user data, and registering and logging in into our application. In this video, we'll focus on defining the user entity. So we are going to take a look at the domain of our identity service and also the implementation of the required entities and interfaces. Let's get into our identity service there. And as we have in our activity service, let's create a new folder called domain. Within our domain, let's create two subdirectories, the models and the repositories. And let's think what we need there. So basically all we need here is our user class. We'll create a new user class here that will represent our account in our actual service. So let's have a new user with the new identifier like this and what our user needs. So if we take a look at our create user command, you can see that we also specified here an email, password, and name. So let's put it there and add this protected setter modifiers. But we will also need a thing called salt to our password and maybe a date of when the account was created. So just say created at protected set. And below, let's create a constructor. So the first one, as usual, will be our protected constructor without any parameters. And below, let's create a public constructor. And this one will take the email and the name of the user. So here we can assign our new user ID, our email. Let's say we won't have this always in lowercase our name and the date of creation into the date time UDC now. Okay, what else? Well, as you might remember with our activity model, we have this basic validation, whether these properties are correct or not. So we can do the same thing here. So let's say we'll have this validation for our email. And if our email is not valid, we can just say empty, user email and the message would be user email cannot be empty and let's do the same for our name empty user name user name cannot be empty of course for the proper email validation we would probably use some specialized regex which is a regular expression we could also validate like the length of a name and so on but for that scenario this simple validation will do and now let's open our repositories. So here we have a single repository called iUser repository. And let's just add three methods there. The first one will be called get async. And we want to be able to get our user by its identifier. The second one will be also the get async method. But for the second one, we want to be able to get our user by the email because the email should be unique. And finally, let's have this add async that will add our user. Okay, and this is how our domain may look like. We have our user entity with its uh, basic validation. We have our user repository. And now we can move further with implementing the password hashing and storage. In this video, we talked about the domain of our identity service. We created the user class and the interface of our user repository. 